Today I want to talk about how I study for exams in medical school. I specifically mentioned for exams because I think there's quite a difference between the way you would want to study to do well on a test compared to the way you study for the sake of learning. Um, I think studying for exams require you to be efficient with your time, especially in medical school when you have a lot of information in front of you and you have a short amount of time before the exam. So I'm currently a second year medical student and over the past year and first year we've been through a lot of exams and I started out having a really complex study method. I pretty much did everything before an exam like every possible study technique like I did Notion, Anki, wrote notes, draw stuff, use whiteboard, I did everything and it was really tiring for me and over time I learned to cut down and from experience I basically cut down the things that didn't work for me and I kept the stuff that did meaning what I'm about to show you may not necessarily work for you but it has worked quite well for me and I think I'm gonna continue this method for this whole second year so first I want to talk about the essentials what I need for my method to work I have first a laptop in this case I have a MacBook and I have an iPad with the Apple Pencil and I also use a notebook I mainly use just plain white paper no lines and pencil and pen although now I kind of prefer pen because it's I guess I could write faster so I'm gonna talk about the flow first so your new course starts you enter the uh, lecture room you sit down professor comes in and then he begins the course so before that I would well go to the school's e-learning and download the slides on both my laptop and on my iPad and before class starts I would have my iPad usually on my right with the slides on and right now I'm using good notes but you could use any note-taking app on my left I have my laptop on with two windows open uh, one is for Anki and the second one is the PDF of the slides the lecturer starts speaking I would listen and as the lecture is going on on my iPad I'll be well highlighting drawing circles lines or taking notes or starring the important slides the lecturer says is important try and understand the material at that moment like write down notes and drawing arrows and try and make sense of what the slide is trying to say that's the iPad at the same time on my laptop as the lecturer is going through the slides I'll be trying my best to make flashcards now I've been doing this for quite a while so I'm really fast well, so I think I'm pretty fast at making flashcards and I'm able to, and I know the shortcuts and I'm able to do them quickly. If you're first starting out, having to both write down the iPad and making flashcards on your laptop at the same time while listening to a lecture may be a bit overwhelming, but I've gotten quite used to that. You're in the lecture, you know, you've never learned this material before and how could you possibly make flashcards during the lecture? Well, last, well, b before, I would before I didn't really do this I just had my iPad on and I would make flashcards after the lectures or when I come back at home or during the weekends but I found out that the quality of my flashcards didn't really change that much whether or not I do it during class or after class because at the end of the day at least in my school our lectures go up up until the exam day so like you know it's pretty fast so it didn't really matter so the lecture finishes and now you're just organizing everything you know organizing your files and I'll download the slides for the next hour and repeat the process until I finish the whole day at the end of the day I'm going to have Anki decks for each lecture so if I had six lectures today I'd have six decks and I would obviously have a title for each of them and I would organize them and they would all have I would aim for about 20 
to 25 flashcards per lecture. I don't want to make too much. And some lectures I'll make only 10 flashcards, depending on the length of the lecture and, and the material as well. And on my iPad, I'll just have random stuff written on the lecture slides. That's at the end of the day. I don't start doing the flashcards yet. I, when I come back home, I do either two things, well, three. If I have assignments or a report to write or homework, I'll do that. And I don't care about reviewing or previewing. But if I do have time, uh, but if I do have time or if I've done all of that, I either review today's lectures. And by that, I mean not necessarily going through the slides, but watching videos because I use osmosis and also YouTube and maybe do some reading online about them. Or I read the reference books for those lectures. If I don't do that, it depends on my mood, you know. If, if, if I don't want to review, I could preview tomorrow's lectures, meaning I download tomorrow's lectures if they're available and just, just quickly skim through all of them to have an idea what's going to happen tomorrow. So that's like my normal day. And I would do that up until when I have about a week to 10 days left before the exam. And that's when I start properly studying. By that, I mean start doing the flashcards. And this is how it, it's going to flow. So when it's 10 days before the exam, of course, the lectures are still going on, meaning every day in school, I'll, I'll be doing what I said earlier, laptop, iPad, flashcards, notes in class. After class, home, that's when I start. Uh, I usually don't use my iPad at this point. I have my laptop, I have Anki on, and I'll just, I could just randomly pick a lecture or I could do it in the order that, in alphabetical order or, it doesn't really matter. I pick a lecture and I have my notebook opened in front of me with a pen or a pencil. This is how it's gonna play out. The flashcards that I'm able to answer without, well, if I'm able to answer it immediately, I will just skip to the, I will just go to the next question. I won't write anything down. But if it reaches a question that I can't answer, meaning it's something new to me, or I can't, you know, find it in my memory, I'll, try, I'll think about it for a bit. And then I'll check the answer. And then I would jot down that information on my notebook. I'll just write down or paraphrase it or shorten it. Then I'll keep doing flash uh, the flashcards. I will jot down that information down on the notebook. I do it in a way such that I'm able to connect them. So I'm going to show you some of my examples. So I would have the title of the lecture as like this big circle and I'll be drawing arrows out of it. So arrows out of it and it would connect to the information that I wasn't sure of. And the information that you're trying to memorize, you're you'll be able to connect them on paper. Two things is happening here. One is I'm trying to memorize the information. That's by doing the flashcards, just trying to memorize it. And secondly is I'm putting down the information that I don't know on paper and I'm connecting them together, trying to find a connection. So for example, you, you, you could find easily connection, the pathogenesis of a disease, the disease, the disease could connect to the symptoms and then the symptoms could connect to the treatment. The treatment may be de may depend on the symptoms or it may not. You don't have to connect everything together. Some parts could be completely separate. Like maybe you have multiple ways to classify the disease and it just doesn't connect. You don't have to connect it. What I'm trying to say is you put down the information you don't memorize on the paper, on a piece of paper and well, I just try to connect them and try to make sense. So once I've so once I've done one lecture, you know, on key and writing down my paper, I'll just look at it. Now you have a mind map of all the information that you didn't know before. Now you've memorized the information. And secondly, you're able to organize that information that you don't know on a piece of paper and make connections between them. And the cool part is sometimes not only can you make connections in that one lecture, but you could connect that lecture to another lecture. You can only do that if you write down the info on paper. 
you know, doing Anki flashcards, you know, it's just memorizing information, 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 but you're not able to build a map in your head. The thing is, you can't build a map in your head. You need to build it on paper first. Then it can kind of stick to your head. So I would just do that until just do all the flashcards and write down on paper until I have about one or two days left before the exam. And then this is when I start doing the past papers. Because now I've studied everything and I've memorized stuff. I forgot stuff. I probably forgot a lot. I usually forget a lot, but that's okay. Now I do the past papers. And now before all of this, I never touch the past. I don't look at it. I don't want to see it. And I do them blindly, meaning I don't look at them first or review. I just do them and I will see my results. If my results are good, obviously you feel confident. But if they're bad, then that's when you really have to go through the lecture slides, at least on the parts that you're not sure. Like I would go through the lecture slides themselves, not my Anki, the lecture slides, and really read through it thoroughly on the parts I got wrong. But at least in my experience so far, I usually do pretty well on the past papers. So I don't have to just go back to the slides. So if I do well on one past paper, I'll keep doing the next until I finish all the past papers. And then the night before the exam, I'll just pick one or two past papers and I discuss it with a friend. And by that, I mean, we would go through each question. And let's say the question uh, asks you to choose the right sentence. You have five sentences and one is correct, four is wrong. And we would discuss why it's wrong and how we can make it correct. And we would discuss the correct answer too and how it relates to or if it gives out one characteristic of the disease, we would try to list out the other characteristics so that, you know, if the professor changes the question, we're still able to answer them on the same topic. Then of course, get a good night's sleep. The next day, take the exam. Hopefully you'll do well. And yeah, that's pretty much my study method. Good luck on your exams. And thank you.